So how, how are everybody? My name is Hajime Kazaki from IIBA Research. And I'm going to talk about the network stack in general, not about the, some particular feature of the network stack, but in, in more broader sense. So this talk and this work has been studied based on my personal question about why there, there are so many network stack implementation available and why people are trying to implement network stack again and again. And the network stack in this talk can be defined as a, a collection of the implementation of the network protocols, as well as the network related uh, uh, software like a network interface card driver or resource management stuff like a packet scheduling. And as an example of the availability of the network stack implementation, uh, as, I saw, as I mentioned before, there are so many network stack implementation available. And uh, recently, uh, the, there are newly implemented network stack, which is used for the pure user space network stack purposes. Like uh, if you have an application, but if you don't want to use the network stack in the host operating system, you can do it inside a user space application by attaching the network stack implement implementation inside the application. Like uh, in this, uh, as I shown in this slide, uh, MTCP or assist uh, is kind of example that can be categorized as these use cases. And uh, this user space network stack is usually used with the network stack bypass technology or kernel bypass technology like uh, DPDK or NetMap. And uh, others are also thinking about uh, to adapt this idea into as a container runtime. Like uh, Google recently introduced the ZVisor, which is based on the Golang based uh, Linux emulator, for example, uh, let's say. And they also have uh, their own network stack implementation written in the Go, and it is used inside the, the container runtime. And the other example is uh, used as a, a network stack implementation in the unikernel. A unikernel is kind of the single address space, single process model operating system, which is useful for the guest operating system in the, the cloud, operate, uh, cloud uh, environment. And uh, there are so many academic papers available uh, implementing the, this kind of unikernel technology and uh, the LWIP, which is one of the network stack implementation, is kind of popular software used by this kind of uh, project. And other projects using the, their own network stack implementation is OS3. Uh, they are originally ported FreeBSD network stack implementation to the, the Unikernel operating system, and they are trying to maintain the latest FreeBSD features, as well as the providing the ABI compatibility to the application side. And Red Hat recently announced that the, their new project, which is called UKL, I guess Unikernel Linux or something like that. And then the, I don't see any source code from the, this project, but the, their announcement mentioned that the, they are trying to port the Linux code as a form of the unikernel way to provide a single address space operating system. So I tried to summarize those kind of projects in the single table, and they, they have a, a very different feature set of the each, each network stack. And some of them only implemented the particular protocols of the network stack implementation. And some of them were ported from the existing operating system like OSB based on the FreeBSD as I mentioned before. And the LAMP kernel is based on the NetBSD kernel in order to utilize as a user space network stack. So there are different implementation because they have a different motivation for their, their software. So some of them are really wanted to have a highly optimized network stack 
in terms of the performance wise, or some of them already cared about the small footprint of the resource usages. But they are not some, uh, always the feature rich. The, some implementation doesn't have a particular feature of the network protocol, for example. And I was wondering why this, or this was happened. I was trying to understand the whole pictures of these kind of situation and then uh, try to categorize the how to implement such a network, a network stack. And uh, some of them are implemented from scratch without any, uh, without any different default code, uh, code bases. Like uh, the in uh, list, uh, listed in this figure, uh, it's, uh, it's right. Those uh, implementation like uh, LWIP, MTCP, and the Mirage OS based on the OCaml uh, implemented a network stack from scratch with this uh, particular languages. And uh, this, in this categories, they have uh, their own uh, motivation, but uh, it's usually missing, lacks some of the but, uh, important feature. And, uh, I'm not sure, but uh, it's not going to be it's not going to be implemented in the future. And uh, some of them are implemented as uh, uh, by porting the existing code bases, as I mentioned before. So the porting is also effective way to do something differently with the, the same software code bases. But it is also hard to follow up or catch up the latest fixes or latest update of the original source code. If both code are growing different and separately, the synchronization between the original code and the newly, newly implemented one is difficult to achieve. So in order to eliminate such a porting, uh, the headache of the porting effort, the any kind of technology has been introduced by, uh, it was originally used, the terminology is, was originally used by the NetBSD guy of the LAMP kernel project. And the, the Linux kernel library, which I, has, uh, which I have been working heavily on recently, and the user model Linux is also following this idea. The idea of the any kernel is put additional layer into the monolithic kernel and try to provide a different environment, ex uh, execution environment in, not only in the kernel space execution in the typical monolithic kernel, but also to provide the user space execution, for example. So the question here that I, I want to answer is, uh, is the implementation of the network stack a good idea or not? And uh, from now on, uh, from the following slides and the rest of the, my talk, I'm trying to answer this question as no by conducting a, the measurement study with the experiment, I mean, kind of experiment. So what, what I'm doing as an experiment is trying to measure the feature richness or matureness of the particular network stack by measuring the conformance level of the network stack implementation by uh, the tester tools. Why I'm doing this measurement is I want to have a metric to measure the maturity of the network stack implementation because there are so many numbers of the different network stack implementations. And uh, but I, how I, I am doing this measurement is using the external tools, uh, which is called XCR Ambil test suite. Suite. So XAMBIL is a kind of proprietary software uh, which is trying to validate the conformance of the network stack or uh, network protocol implementation to the ITF standard or RFCs. So it is usually used for, not for this kind of particular, but answering the particular questions of the personal one, but to try to improve the, the product implementation before releasing the software in the, in the market. So the customer for this software is usually the router vendor or 
network st stack vendors or operating system vendors. So how it works, how the XCI Ambil works in general. So this is the basic example, a basic setup of the test bed. Um, so, so the test suite, which is called uh, Ambil, is starting as a starting by emulating the topology for the particular test. So in this example, this so left left box is is the tester node, and the, the right box is, is the the device and network stack under the test. And uh, in this simple example, this just connect a single network interface to the network uh, the device under test. And after setting up the, this emulated topology, the tester node triggers the, some packet to the network stack and uh, try to wait the expected response from the network stack side. So if, for example, if, you, if the left side node transmits the app request packet and they expect some expected uh, uh, proper app, app response packet from the network stack, the tester node, uh, tester node reports this, this test is uh, succeeded, for example. So for the test that I'm going to present uh, in the later, we, we, use, we use the, the two Linux boxes. So for the tester yeah. node, we use the slightly, not slightly, but the older version of the Linux kernel, which is the requirement for the, this tester software. And the device under test, for the device under test, uh, we use the uh, 4, 415 kernel for the host operating system. And the most of the tests are using the user space network stack. So a network stack for the, uh, most of the test is not based on this uh, 4.415 kernel. And we tested the uh, seven defined test suite we see in the here, from the app to the IPv6 neighbor discovery protocol. We are also trying to do a transport protocol in conformance test, but uh, we didn't have much time to express, uh, explain it in this talk. So for the device under the test, uh, we also use the same um, software's eight defined implementation for the test and for the network stack. And uh, the conducting, by conducting this uh, measurement, uh, we, have a, we have a bunch of the results. <coughs> like this, uh, which, which is a, li a little bit uh, cryptic to under uh, understand, but the mo each of the tests generates such a failure or inconsistent test inconclusively uh, report from the each of the tests. And uh, this is the summary of the all the results that I have gotten from the, the measurement study. And uh, the, the number, how we can read these numbers? So the, the each, each of the test suites generate the number of the past succeeded tests divided the number of the, the total number of the tests. And uh, some of the red colored results shows uh, some particular uh, uh, information like uh, for the, for example, the sister result, uh, because the sister only support a single network interface card to be configured. Some of the test is not conducted. And uh, that's why, because that's why the number of the total tests for example, IPv4 is lower than the others. And uh, for the lamp kernel case, they have, uh, they have a support to configure the multiple interface, but uh, uh, during the test, uh, the lamp kernel crashes uh, during the test, so we, ca we cannot con continue to the other rest of the test. So that's why the number of to total number of the test is lower than the others. And as you can see, the most of the, uh, some of the implementation, like a sister from sister to MTCP, 
which doesn't, which doesn't, don't, don't have the IPv6 implementation. So those tests are not conducted. But the Zbys are recently announced that they will going, they are going to support IPv6 in the future. So it's gonna be different if I conduct again this test. And the Linux kernel library and the Linux kernel should be equivalent from the, this kind of uh, test result. But uh, we can see some differences between them, which I am not sure what is the root cause of this problem. And the LWIP, one of the uh, full scratch based implementation, shows the, uh, covers all the protocol support from this seven different test suite. But uh, it shows some, uh, some lower score compared to the Linux implementation, for example. But the number of the number that I show in this table has contained some of the misleading information. Like uh, some of the tests requires the additional configuration to the network stack. For example, some of the tests require the, the modification to the internal state, like uh, clearing the app entry before the test, or send, try, uh, sending the IPC, ICMP request from the network stack side. But the, most of them doesn't have such a, such a dynamic configuration from the network stack implementation. For example, the most of the user space network stack implementation only has only have a static configuration file, which can be uh, un, uh, which can be read during the boot, bootstrap processes. So after running such a network stack, we cannot configure any internal state. So in that case, in such a test, it doesn't have a, it, those kind of tests will be failed. And uh, some of the error or failure is uh, due to the ambiguous ambiguity of the specification. So if you are familiar with the ITF RFC, it, you can often see the may or should statement from the specification, uh, which can be interpreted as the implement, implementation has the option to behave blah, 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 or other way. So it's such an ambiguity makes the test uh, our test failure. So I'm going to show the one of some of the example that I found the uh, I found as an error during this test. So this is an example of the ARP test uh, with this simple topology, and uh, some of the uh, this test try to send the ARP request packet from the rest side node, and the. Uh, the expected response of this test is not to respond the app response packet from this uh, app request because the hardware typeset is uh, unknown information. So the specification says it should not respond the app response packet, but uh, some of the implementation like the sister and the NetBSD can uh, respond to the app request. The other failure that I also found in the Linux kernel and the Linux kernel library is the ICMP v6 uh, messages handling. So in this case, the Linux box is, is running as a router and the, the host one node in the top, host one node in the top one try to send the ICMP request to the host two, but uh, this Linux was cannot resolve the next hop, the address of the next hop. So in this case, the standard say that the, it's the data not respond the destination unreachable messages with the reason code as a tree, address and uh, address unreachable, but the Linux node respond with zero. This can be kind of corner case, but uh, the standard, this is not conformed to the standard in the current implementation, not uh, for 15 kernel at least in of the Linux kernel implementations. 
other failure that I found in the most of the implementation is the, the behavior with the ICMP address mask request. So no implementation respond this packet. And uh, I guess nobody, because nobody uses this feature, nobody is worried about this failure. So this is, and this is the kind of summary from the observation of this measurement study. And then most of the implementation, is the half of the implementation doesn't have uh, IPv6 implementation because, I don't know, nobody, not so many people require such a feature. And then some of the implementation has, doesn't have a, doesn't have a, can I, doesn't have an important feature like IP. Mm. Okay. And IP forwarding. Or, uh, some of the information only support a single interface configura configuration. So to highlight what I found from the Linux implementation, the our measurement study. So most of the tests are succeeded with the Linux implementation, but uh, some of the tests are fail failed, as I mentioned before. So those are the list, this is the list of the failed tests that I uh, found during the test. So the last one is already I mentioned, is the defined code number of the ICMP v6 uh, packet. And the top two failed test is related to the handling the fragmented packet at the router node. But I found that if I, in, the, uh, if I uninstall the net filter, some of the net filter modules, this issue will be work around it. So I don't think this is the critical error or failure, but uh, it should be reminded for the future. So that's almost it. So my message from this measurement study is the maturing the network stack is usually hard, but uh, choosing, uh, using the full scratch implementation is tempting because the, uh, you have a fully, uh, full, fully, fully, uh, freely option, free option to, to do what you want to do without any restriction to the existing implementation. But uh, using long lead network stack is also one of the good options to utilize the uh, matured network stack. So thank you for your time. I'm happy to take uh, any questions. Any questions? <coughs> yeah, I have a question for you. So you, the, y y your spreadsheet, we're showing all the different implementations. Um, do some of these, uh, yeah, that one, no, next. I guess Linux, when you say 1991, what, just the 1991 kernel version or just? No, 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 mm. I just tried to mention how old or how old. Okay, so the stack hasn't changed since 1991? No, I mean, oh, no, I what do you mean then? How old, the oh. just age of the, uh, it's always been around, I think. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So, which one of these don't matter, right? It, it doesn't matter, even if you implement it from scratch. Is there a specific test that doesn't matter? Okay. Like, I think you showed one. Are these, like, very important test cases? Or you must pass these to be... <coughs> I think you showed one, which is a corner case. Mm -hmm. uh, or something, a feature that nobody uses anyways. Right. But, but Anvil seems to want to test it because it's in the spec. Mm -hmm. How many of these are like in that area? <coughs> you mean for the, this particular case? Yeah, that, that, that's the one that caught my eye, yeah, that nobody actually even uses this. So this case, all the implementation <coughs> failed with our test. Yeah, because it's an obscure feature that nobody has probably implemented, yes? Yes, but uh, the, our uh, ICSI Ambil test suite is, is actually optimized for the Cisco IO iOS implementation. Oh. So maybe Cisco, uh, only Cisco, <laughs> I don't yeah, know. Okay. So okay. the tests 
state is kind of biased with this implementation, but uh, okay. yep. All right, all right. So your message is don't try to implement this, it's been, it I'm works I'm not going well. to describe everybody, but. Uh, all right. But you know, you, you can reinvent the wheel, but maybe you'll have a little hole in it. Right. Yeah, okay. Thanks. Yes. All right, any more <coughs> questions? So, um, yeah. first of all, I love the title of the talk. Uh, very provocative, so that's pretty cool. Um, one thought though, so when we look at all these uh, open source user space stacks, uh -huh. um, one measurement of the quality that you might want to think about is what is the development community behind these? Mm -hmm. So I, I see all of these and I've heard of them, mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know, like if I wanted to do a user space stack, I wouldn't know where to begin because um, what is, one of the metrics is, is this thing actually support it? Do we have thousands of developers like we do in Linux? So I think that it's great information. Um, that's just one thing that might, you might want to think about adding is, as a, a measurement of the quality of these. Of all of the network user space, only network stack implementation, maybe Zvisor has the biggest community. Do you know, are, are any of these considered like the default for DPDK? I know some of them, like uh, MTCP okay. has a kind of community, overlapping community with DPDK. All right, we're gonna wrap it up here. Thanks. Thank you. Let's give them an applause.